Welcome back to 1834. Today's guest commentator is Roman Emperor and Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius. MacDonald is also going for the Stoic look today, having arrived with his shades on. Let's begin. E4, E5, and MacDonald goes for the King's Gambit. Now, everybody knows that a gentleman must accept a gambit, and although Le Bourdonnais is... French, he's also a gentleman, so he accepts. And MacDonald whips off his chaise to reveal that he's already in beast mode, and as you know, when he's in beast mode, he plays like he's ingested a chess engine, but we've never seen it this early in a game, so will he burn out or not? Marcus says we only live now, everything else is either past or unknown, and the game continues. Knight to f3. And now Le Bourdonnais adds a defender to this pawn by pushing g5, also backed up by the queen, and MacDonald develops his bishop to c4, uh, lining up on the f-pawn here. Le Bourdonnais keeps pushing his g-pawn, he's now threatening the knight, but MacDonald ignores it and gives up his knight by developing his other knight. This is going into the MacDonald gambit variation of the king's gambit, last seen in match 3, game number 6. MacDonald ended up losing that game after 39 moves. So we continue here with queen captures the pawn, and last time in the same position Le Bourdonnais went for knight to c6, but this time he decides to add a defender again to the pawn by going bishop to h6. Marcus says this is fine, but also no man can escape his destiny. Stay calm and serene regardless of what life throws at you. And MacDonald pushes his d pawn to the centre, and now we have knight to c6. This threatens the undefended d-pawn, but beast mode MacDonald doesn't mind, he just castles. Now, Le Bourdonnais needs to make sure that each move counts towards his development. As Marcus says, no random actions, none not based on underlying principles. So d6 would be a fine continuation, letting out his bishop, but instead Le Bourdonnais goes for the bait and captures the d4-pawn. Now, this is a blunder and MacDonald strikes. He sacrifices his bishop for the f-pawn with check, so the king captures back. Now, Mad Mac is down a horse and a bishop but he just doesn't care. Marcus approves, he says what you do now echoes in eternity and we have queen to h5 with check so the king moves aside and now the bishop captures the f pawn, the bishop captures back, the rook captures the bishop and Le Bourdonnais plays knight to f6 to threaten the queen. Although he's still down a knight and a bishop, MacDonald just keeps getting stronger. He continues by checking again, so the king moves back to f7, but now he brings across his other rook to double up in an x-ray against the king behind the knight. Le Bourdonnais decides that he's going to try to get his king to safety by giving back a knight, so he moves his king to e8, and indeed the rook captures the knight. But by now it's just far too late, all moves are bad for Le Bourdonnais. For example, if he tries to develop his light squared bishop by pushing d6, then the queen is coming to g7 and it's going to be threatening checkmate. You're going to be forced to give up the queen for the rook, so the queen captures the rook, the rook captures the queen, but now your other rook is inevitably lost too, so it's all bad. What does Le Bourdonnais do then? Well, he doesn't push d6, instead he brings his queen to e7, and this is even worse. Let's just let MacDonald play it out with stoic perfection. He threatens the black queen with knight to d5, and if you look very carefully beneath his comb over, you'll see that Le Bourdonnais is starting to sweat a little bit. He avoids this attack by moving his queen out to c5, which is also threatening a reveal check upon MacDonald's king, so MacDonald moves the king across to h1. And Le Bourdonnais plays knight back to e6, which threatens MacDonald's queen now. And MacDonald deals with this in typical Mad Mac fashion by giving up his rook for the knight. The pawn captures back, this, this is check, and it threatens the white knight now. And MacDonald simply moves it across to f6, which gives a check. And Marcus here, he says, you have lived your life. Now take what's left and live it properly. And Le Bourdonnais resigned. Everybody is stunned, they can't believe what they just saw. Even MacDonald, who is now returning to normal, is not quite sure what just happened. It's actually a force mate, let's see what the continuation would have been. The check by the knight actually revealed an attack upon the undefended queen, so after you move the king out of check, you're losing the queen. And again, there's not very many sensible moves that you can do as black in this position, but let's just say e5. MacDonald can even play knight to g7, revealing an attack from the rook, and you can't capture the knight here because the queen would come in for instant checkmate, defended by the rook. So we have king to g6, now the rook comes in for a check, defended by the knight, so the king moves again. The queen captures the pawn, again with check, and the only thing you can do to delay the checkmate is to block with the bishop. 
So the rook captures here, and uh, this square is defended by the knight. Uh, you can't come here because the queen will come in for a check. So you're going to move down, and it's just a checkmate from the rook. And that's it. So um, bad luck, Le Bourdonnais. You can't stop McDonald when he's in beast mode. Thank you, Marcus, and see you again next time.